D'Amico Ryans went to his bag of tricks to stop the Cincinnati Bengals in week 14. They broke some tendencies on defense, showed some new things on film, and we're going to talk about it. We're going to show you some plays that outline exactly how the Niners broke their tendencies, some really neat things they did that they don't really do uh, here at the end of the video, and we'll get started with one of the big departures. One of the new things is just the amount of time they ran cover two. They ran cover two 19 snaps in this game. That's more than any, that's more than what they've done all season. And they've run it 13 times overall this season. And we're going to start with the play in the third quarter. This is a two man play. So two high safeties, everyone else is in man coverage and everyone's pretty sticky, uh, except for one key area, which you'll see here in just a second. Yeah, so two-man, again, they ran it a couple times in, in this one. I mean, you mentioned the cover two overall, uh, but even two-man is something that's been rare for them. So we'll kind of let this run once here. Um, and so, yeah, you can see, uh, obviously, the pressure is is good here. This ends up in a sack. This is a, a positive play. This is a third and five play uh, for the 49ers down in the red zone, pushes them back uh, for the field goal attempt that they ultimately miss. So, so definitely a big play here. But this was kind of something that that I think happened a decent amount throughout the game uh, and, until this Cincinnati offense kind of caught fire a little bit late um, in, in that the pressure was kind of like bailing guys out a little bit downfield. There, there were certainly opportunities uh, down the field to hit some shots, uh, and, and this is kind of one of them here. So if you look at, at Josh Norman, who's going to be up at the top on T. Higgins, um, gives up some separation on this in-breaking route. And this is where Burrow's looking. So if you look right after the snap here, uh, he's looking over to the left-hand side. So as you get to the top of his drop, his head is is looking left. He's looking at that route combination. And then here, Higgins manages to, to pull inside and get that inside leverage. And so he's got a step here, right? And there's space in the middle of the field to be able to throw that football. Uh, but the pressure just gets there first. You see Bosa and, and Arden Key come in and, and basically prevent the throw from getting out. And then Ebukam comes around here and, and gets the cleanup sack. But yeah, uh, I, I think it's it's frustrating because Norman, this is exactly what he's supposed to be taking away. So in, in two-man uh, on the outside, you can see uh, on the other side too, Ambry Thomas uh, is doing it. But And we're going to have another play example here where, where you see the same thing. But these guys get in trail, uh, meaning they're going to kind of get behind the receiver, right? And and the reason why is they have that safety help over the top. And so they they are primarily focused on taking away this exact type of route, the short and intermediate stuff. They don't need to really be too worried about getting beat over the top because that's where the safety comes into play, right? If they get beat deep on this, it's really going to be the safety's fault more so than the corner. Um, and, and so he gives up where he has this inside leverage. The thing that he's trying to take away allows Higgins to win back that inside leverage. So there's an opportunity for the throw there. Um, but the pressure gets home and, and they kind of, uh, you know, get off the field. Yeah. And I mean, just look at this pressure, right? This, this is what Bosa does. He, he does this so well where he just starts to the outside and knifes inside and gets inside of that tackle once they overset. And, and that's not, I mean, it's not planned for two players to get in that yeah. gap and, and, and blow right through it, but it works. I mean, Arden Key with a, a good move where he just kind of clubs that hand down uh, and gets right through, and and that is just in Burrow's face right away. Ebukam gets the stat sheet, but all Ebukam is is really being in the right place at the right time. This play is made by absolutely the pressure getting in Burrow's face and, and creating a really positive play for the defense. You get into another cover two snap. In this case, it's going to be another two-man play in the fourth quarter. David talked about what a corner in trail technique is not supposed to give up, and that is inside position. You have inside leverage. Basically, don't let the receiver work through that leverage. And you've got another two-man snap where most everyone is pretty sticky, and you have a very, very similar route with a same coverage mistake from Ambry Thomas, but this time... Burrow's able to capitalize. Yep. So, right, the difference here, we don't get the same pressure, right? Uh, Bosa up top uh, does get around, and and he he wins that matchup, but it's not as quick as, as the last one. It's not right in Burrow's face. And so he's able to kind of slide up just a little bit in the pocket and take advantage of, again, the, the slight separation 
that Higgins is able to get here. And it's it's a, a very similar thing, right? I mean, uh, Ambry Thomas, same technique, same exact route. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's actually the same route concept to that side of the field. And uh, Higgins gets just enough separation winning inside where the defender has his leverage to just the thing you cannot give up in this one. So yeah, we kind of see, right. Like, uh, those opportunities were there, but we, we really saw early on, um, through most of the, I mean, most of the game, most of the first three quarters where the pressure is, is just able to get there and kind of impact things and prevent them from taking those, uh, shots and, and capitalizing on some more opportunities down the field. So now we get to the fourth quarter and in this, in this play, you're going to see really Ambry Thomas, not really play this the way that he should because ultimately he should be getting depth to his side of the field and he gets sucked up by that tight end and there's an opportunity there but once again it's the pressure from the 49ers defensive line that moves burrow off the spot and effectively allows the defense to have a successful down because they are not able to capitalize on the slight mistake and the slight false step that you see there for Andrew thomas yeah, so the 49ers are going to be in in just straight cover two on this play, no longer cover two man. And the thing that we want to focus on here is really Ambry Thomas's drop and, and the lack of depth that he gets in this drop, which ultimately leads to the window that they have uh, to potentially make a throw here. Uh, and, and so we talk a lot about in zone coverage underneath the fenders, the importance for them to get depth, to take away the intermediate routes and, and really be able to play deep to short right you always want to get depth take away the deeper routes that are there and then kind of you're essentially giving up the underneath stuff and and uh coming up and kind of making tackles on that right so you can see the line of scrimmage here is at the 49 yard line he gets basically seven yards of depth right so right here is is kind of when he puts his foot in the ground and he, he gets sucked up a little bit by that underneath route from the tight end and that creates the space behind him for that corner route and here again the pressure kind of saves him Bosa's coming inside on the stunt and he flushes burrow from the pocket at right at the time that he would need to be letting the ball go on on that corner route and so uh you know he can't take advantage by that point uh jimmy ward the safety over the top is able to kind of start closing and being a factor on it and burrow ends up just realizing that he doesn't have anything and he, he just runs out of bounds rather than you know force something into coverage but Really, what you want to see from Thomas in this situation is is he needs to get at least in that kind of like 10 to 12 yard area is is ideal because if he gets there, so if imagine he's sinking instead to the 40 yard line here or just kind of inside the 40 yard line, that's going to be enough to kind of deter Burrow from making that throw. Or if he does do it, he's now close enough to the receiver to be able to kind of turn and run and and have a chance at making a play on it. So uh, you don't want to get sucked up by the underneath route, especially this type of thing where where you have another linebacker that's right there that can help you out on that. He's not breaking hard to the flat. Um, So just something that we saw from him quite a bit in this game when they did go to these different types of cover two looks uh, that that need to see him clean up if this is something that they're going to continue to lean on to kind of protect these corners a little bit. Yes, yeah, so the, the very next play is going to be one in which the 49ers are in cover six. Uh, and this is going to be a coverage that the Niners are used to that they've run for a while, run even with Robert Sala. But in this case, you are not going to see Ambry Thomas with a threat to his side. So at the top of the screen, he and Hufanga are playing that cover two side. And you want to see him do the same thing that he should have done the last play, which is get depth to really force a good throw from the quarterback to get kind of over the underneath defender, but in front of the safety, this is that whole shot. And and you just don't have a really good combination from the safety Hufanga or Ambry Thomas. Ambry doesn't get depth, and Hufanga is basically on a railroad to nowhere on that hash, just dropping straight back when there's no other threat to that side of the field. Like, they basically got one guy, and and one guy goes straight back, the other doesn't get depth, and just they open up a window that Burrow just takes advantage of. Yeah, so Thomas's standpoint, right, you can see as Burrow right here about to let it go. Again, about nine yards of, of depth there, just not getting enough. And, and you can see the window that it creates, right? He's not in position when he turns to open and run here for this route. He's just too far behind to, to have a chance at making a play on this ball. And, and yeah, like you mentioned, on this one, he doesn't even have the excuse 
of uh, another receiver underneath that it kind of is in his vision that is holding him there. And then Hufanga, yeah, I, I think it really looks like, I mean, we know the 49ers play a lot of quarters. And, and so in quarters, you're really going to be, um, you know, kind of on that line, right? Where you, you see where his initial alignment is, he's going to kind of stay in that general area and, and just typically be a little bit more flat footed. And what it looks like here is that he's kind of on that same path, that same initial alignment. And then he just takes a more aggressive drop, but the drop is straight back. So you can see him move right down the hash. And when you look at it, kind of his threats on that side of the field. So as a deep half safety, he's got two receivers over there. He's got the the receiver and Higgins that split wide and he's got the tight end. And so at worst, he kind of needs to be splitting those two receivers um, and it, with the being a condensed formation here, you know, that they're going to probably want to work the outside in terms of routes that he's most likely to see. And so you really would want him, if anything, cheating outside just a little bit. And especially after the snap here, right? So you, you see what that tight end does he's chipping. So at that point you can completely eliminate him as a vertical threat, right? You're not going to chip and get far enough downfield to threaten a deep half safety uh, before the quarterback gets killed there. So he can, he can basically now focus wholly on Higgins here. And he doesn't, he just, again, drops right down the hash. He should be breaking on this like well before the ball's thrown to, to kind of take this away. And so you get those kind of two young defenders. there, not getting to the right spots in their drops, and, and ending up with a wide open throw. So up until now, um, you've seen a lot of cover two. You've seen the pressure having success against the Bengals, which we knew was likely going to happen with the state of their offensive line. You've got some some opportunities that the, the, the team has been built out from. But then you also see D'Amico Ryans going to something that he doesn't go to very often. And that is sim pressure or a simulated pressure. Uh, for the unfamiliar, a simulated pressure is basically a blitz look. So you can see there that it looks like they're going to blitz, but only four people rush. And this play right here was from the first quarter. And Fred Warner is basically scot-free running straight at Burrow because the simulated pressure made the Bengals react a particular way and it screwed up their entire protection. And you've got a free rusher right at Burrow and it rushes the throw. Yeah, I mean, this is the the very first pass play of the game here. So this is second and 12, uh, you know, after a, a, a run for a loss on first down, going empty, and you're basically showing Burrow in this offense a look that you have not shown this entire season, right? So you're, you're getting to essentially what looks like one of your typical zone pressures, you know, cover three type of look, right, where you're going to get uh, the blitzer kind of from the bottom there, which went from, from Aziz, and then normally what you would expect is one of those guys, whether it be Warner or as he does Ebukam, and this one drops out. And so it looks initially like you're going to get that same sort of three deep, three under pressure that they would normally do. Um, but the difference here is, yeah, Aziz is actually just kind of, uh, you know, faking. He just wants to get that guard to commit to him and, and make him think that he's coming. And then he's going to drop out and be an extra underneath defender. Um, he doesn't really have time. I mean, this is such a quick throw. It's a quick game concept that they're running. Uh, so the ball is out because obviously Fred Warner is on him immediately. Um, and Aziz doesn't have really enough time to get back out and, and be a factor on the play. But yeah, you're, you're obviously showing the Bengals something that they weren't prepared for. And you're getting a protection breakdown here because essentially what they have to do in empty here is you kind of look at it from the end zone view is they have to pick one of those linebackers, right, that they're going to to uh, account for in their five-man protection. So the 49ers are showing six potential rushers there when you look at kind of the four down linemen plus Warner and Aziz. And so they have to choose who they're going to, to block from those two. And so they decide that, okay, a lot of the times what they're going to have Warner do here is drop out. Like that's just they show him a, a lot in that A-gap, but he ends up dropping out and being a zone defender. So they end up sliding the protection towards Aziz, and that means nobody blocks Warner when he comes. And so he just has a free shot right up the A-gap, forces uh, you know a slightly off-target throw that the tight end can't pull in, and it's uh, a positive play for your defense. Going into week 14, the 49ers had run one simulated pressure all season. They start the game against the Bengals with a simulated pressure on the first pass play. And then in the fourth quarter on the second to last drive, we see another simulated pressure. And this one actually gets home 
This is K1 Williams for a sack. And the interesting thing is this is also a unique way for them to get into cover two, which we haven't seen them do um, at all this season. I don't know that I've seen them do this at all, whether it be under Sala or under D'Amico Ryans. And so he really went to his bag of tricks, not just with simulated pressure, but also getting into a cover two look. Yeah, I mean, so he's really, it's its almost like he started watching some tape from some other teams around the league and was like, hey, I'm going to start pulling some of these things because, yeah, you see some of these these different looks uh, with teams and, and how they want to get to their pressures and, and get to cover two specifically. But for the 49ers, I mean, this is, yeah, you're getting two things essentially that they don't do a whole lot of. You're getting the sim pressure element and then you're getting the cover two behind it, right? Both of these things have been very, very rare for them uh, for the first, you know, 13 weeks of the season. And and so, yeah, what you're going to get at the bottom essentially is you've got Kwan Williams, right, in the slot. They're kind of setting this up in, in a way that makes it look like one of their typical cover three zone pressures, right? Where we're going to blitz K1. It looks like, okay, I'm just going to drop Jimmy Ward down and, and kind of protect uh, that receiver that's there, uh, that, that, that K1 is kind of leaving. And then it's just going to be a normal cover three zone pressure look. But from there, you can see Dukowski Tart, who starts in the middle of the field, actually continues rotating all the way over to the deep half on uh, the wide side of the field there. And then it's going to be Ambry Thomas up top, who is the one that kind of sprints back and becomes the other deep half player uh, to the boundary side. And so you end up, you get a good kind of look at it here of a a cover two um, shell, right? Where you got two deep defenders. I've got my five underneath guys, both my, uh, you know, I've got my one outside corner there that's playing in the flat. I've got Hufanga that's kind of getting out there and becoming my other flat defender. So I get this interesting rotation that makes, I'm sure Burrow is, is thinking like I've got cover three here. This is what they do all the time. Uh, you show them a different look and then you get, again, the protection kind of breakdown here to allow a free rusher and, and K1 is able to get home. I love how, the, I mean, can you imagine the right side of the offensive line? I mean, look at them. They're, they're sliding over there. They're, they look at the three potential rushes, right? Warner, Ebukam, Bosa. And then right by the there, time every point. Look at the center. Yeah. yeah, right here is like, okay, Warner. So now I've got, I, I know I'm sliding right to get those three over there plus uh, Armstead and Key. And you think you've got five on five, right? You think you've got maybe Key, you've got, and maybe if you have Williams, whatever. But now basically, I mean, it just, the C's part, you've got the the right side of the line is like, uh-oh, because they're not blocking anyone. Warner and Ibukam yeah. both drop out. <laughs> so they're, bas- they're blocking air, right? <laughs> and now you've got three on two on the left side of the line. I mean, it's perfect. It's it, it that's exactly how you draw it up and it's exactly how it was executed. And on the back end, you still have something really interesting happening happening with the coverage. Um that I mean, this is a it's it's not something that you see often with the 49ers. It it's really it's really cool. Um I think you also need to call out Armstead here does a fantastic job, right? Uh, and, and so even with the initial set from the offensive line knowing that they're going to be sliding right a little bit there from the center on over, they, they still have some time to recover, right? K1 Williams is rushing from depth. Um, and, and so if uh, essentially if Armstead were to kind of stay wide here, like they could maybe kind of recover or the center could get over and, and try to help. But Armstead essentially attacks the guard, right? He makes that contact first and forces the guard to commit to blocking him, knowing, and the, and the guard's thinking, right, I'm probably not going to get any help here based on the way we're sliding things. And then he makes sure to do that kind of inside move, right, to take the guard with him to open up that space and make it wider for K1 to come through. And, uh, yeah, it's just K1 just has to basically close and, and make a tackle. And that was such a pivotal play, too, because that is yep. the second-to-last drive. Um, I mean, th- this is this this arguably is one of the most pivotal plays in the game. And D'Amico Ryan's pulled out, you know, uh, an extra bag, an extra something that we didn't know was in the playbook. He reached deep in there, uh, and, and it helped them win the game. Overall, this was a game where th- we talked about it on the pod. The offense was a little uneven until they weren't there at the end of the game, and the defense did enough to win this game, and they did it with. Uh, uh, we'll call it a unique game plan and unique to them. Not that cover two is a unique coverage or anything, but it's something that really broke a lot of tendencies for the Niners defense. I mean, playing more cover two snaps in one game than they had played all season, running more simulated pressures in one game than they had all season. 
Um, this was a game where I, th I think they knew that this offense was something they were going to have to contend with. And D'Amico Ryan's put together a pretty good game plan. I mean, it's something I would like to see more of. I mean, they're not always going to be as fortunate as they were in this one where, you know, we mentioned on on the pod right after where it just felt like it took a long time for Cincinnati to kind of adjust and, and start looking to poke some holes in, in that cover too, right? And, and kind of switch up their attack a bit. And so you would... Uh, expect that, you know, they're now that they've got it on tape, teams are going to be maybe a little bit more prepared for it. And so you've got to kind of sure up some of those things that we talked about, right. When, uh, it, with, in terms of corners, not getting enough depth on, on, uh, their flat drop when they're in cover to, you know, guys making sure to take away routes to the technique that they're playing to, if they do more to man. Uh, and, and so you need to kind of clean up some of those things. And it makes sense that they're obviously not as, you know, uh, I guess, comfortable in those looks as they are in the stuff that they spend all their time doing, right? Like you don't usually see as many of those type of mistakes, um, you know, especially from the secondary players when they're in their basic like cover three, cover four type of coverages. Uh, and, and so, yeah, I think it's a little bit something new for them, but it, it really does. If you can execute it a little bit better, it helps protect those corners a little bit, you know, and I think right now in, in terms of the secondary play, their safeties are certainly better than their outside cornerbacks are. And so if you can put maybe a little bit more on them, you can limit what routes, you know, your cornerbacks are going to have to, to cover, limit the number of situations that they're going to end up in one on one situations without any help. Uh, like that's, that's probably a positive for your defense. So I think continuing to do some of these things, even if it's not to the same degree that we saw them in, in the Cincinnati game, I, th I think would be a positive for them because they have to figure out a way to, to kind of help this secondary out and overcome some of these talent deficiencies that they have at cornerback. Well, that does it for this week's Patreon video. Thanks for the beer. Thanks for tuning in. And as always go Niners.